Well, today the government published their Storm Overflows Discharge Reduction Plan as part of its plans to tackle sewage pollution. So Maria Caulfield is the Conservative MP for Lewis and she joins me on the programme this evening. Thanks very much for being with us, Maria. Good evening, Sean. So what do these plans lay out exactly? Well, in Parliament last year, we laid down in law um, our plans to end uh, storm overflows and and sewage uh, discharges uh, because for 150 years, ever since the sewage system's been uh, created, storm overflows have been there so that when the sewage system gets to a a, a full point, um, there's a release mechanism out to sea and into waters um, or otherwise that sewage will back up into people's drains and through their toilets and gardens and roads. Um, So they have always been there. But what we're increasingly finding is with the increased population, um, the one or two events that may happen in a year are now happening on a regular basis. They're only supposed to be used in extreme circumstances. And our concern as Sussex MPs in particular um, is that they're being routinely used. And so the government uh, brought in a law which we voted for at the end of last year to phase these out uh, and to change our sewage system so that sewage overflows um, no longer are are part of the sewage uh, process. How will it all be enforced, though? Well, it, it will be enforced, and part of that is that we've set a standard that we expect by 2035 that 75% of these storm overflows uh, will be eliminated. And it comes with um, money. There's £56 billion to help pay for it, but it does mean changing our sewage system. So I know that many uh, members of the public want us to eliminate them now. And if we simply stop storm overflows um, going out to sea, the sewage would back up into the system. It has to you know, have a release somewhere if the, if the sewage system is full um, but what we want to introduce is uh, you know funding to make that happen but also targets and enforcement we know southern water for example um, last year were fined 90 million pounds by the environment agency for um, wrongful sewage uh, dis- dumping at, at sea so uh, we we are taking this extremely seriously um, and if there was a quick and simple way to end storm overflows we would do it now but we have to physically change that sewage system to make sure that uh, while we end discharges to sea we're not creating creating uh, problems elsewhere with sewage uh, leaking out into other parts of our community. Are these targets set in stone or is there a risk of, um, pardon the pun, that they could be watered down? I mean, these are these are legally binding um, changes that okay. we're making. So the the laws that we put into the Environment Act last year um, have um, kind of set in stone that this process. And so the enforcement and the targets that are there, um, water companies will now have to come up with their plan of how they're going to do this within the time scale that we've set out, and um, and how they're going to make that happen in each of these regions. Um, I am concerned about the again the notices today. I know we did have heavy rainfall yesterday and. Most of our sewage system is based on rain and sewage um, mixing together. So in heavy rainfall, our sewage system does fill up quite quickly. But I'm not convinced, uh, certainly from the responses I had from the uh, discharges last week, that these are extreme enough events that they should be using outflows uh, to help the system cope. And so we are will be meeting with both Southern Water and the Environment Agency as a group of Sussex MPs to, that while these changes are being made, that outflows and discharges are not just the normal way of handling sewage because it's unacceptable really that people can't use our our local coastways uh, because of the concern about the water quality. How confident are you then in the government that this plan is the ultimate solution or do you think there might possibly be more that you have to do after it? I think there could be more um, uh, to be done. So this is the start of the process. It's a £56 billion capital investment to help change our sewage system to end these um, outflows um, that are currently kind of a, an integral part of, of how sewage is handled. Um, and, and we will, uh, you know, certainly go further if we need to. And we, we do, we will expect um, uh, water companies to come up with their plans for how each individual uh, region will deal with their, their sewage um, uh, changes. Um, but, you know, the law is there now. We are the first government ever to put in law that we want to eliminate storm overflow uh, discharges um, from our sewage system. Every other country, most Western countries use this system as well. Brussels, for example, have got have had problems recently with their sewage um, overflows. Um, even in Scotland, where water is uh, nationalised, they have a similar problem. So it's the, the way the sewage system is set up that we fundamentally have to change and we're going to invest in it, but also there will be legal targets and a legal timeline that water companies will have to meet.
In your capacity as Conservative MP for Lewis, I have to talk to you uh, briefly, if I may, about the the energy price cap being raised today. Uh, Can I also play you, it's only 40 odd seconds, Maria, it's a clip of consumer expert Martin Lewis, what he's been saying earlier to the BBC, and I'd like to get your reaction to this in just a moment, if I may. I first warned we would be at these levels on my show in March. March. We knew this was coming. All the the, the politicians saying we need to wait for the actual number. Why? It's a published algorithm based on a single underlying rate, the wholesale year ahead rates. The the, the predictions were always going to be spot on. The nearer we got to the mark and within a couple of months away, we knew what it was. We did not have to wait. And, And as the chair of the Money and Mental Health Policy Institute charity, the devastating impact on people like yours, mental health, because of the worry that you have, to have this announcement come today without having the help in place so people would know what would come is frankly irresponsible. So that's what the consumer expert Martin Lewis has been saying to the BBC today. So, Maria, why have people had to wait until your party picks a new leader before they stop worrying if they're going to be able to actually pay their bills? So, so, so Martin Lewis is correct. We, we, you know, we all had a, a, an estimate of, of the uh, energy price cap that was going to be announced today, and we have put uh, plans in already. So, uh, listeners will, uh, most of them should have received their 150 pound council tax uh, rebate, which came um, last month. Uh, we've also uh, only last month as well raised the national insurance threshold to give people an extra 330 pounds um, of their income that they're able to keep. Uh, from next month, there'll be 400 pounds off people's energy bills. And we've also got the £300 extra for pensioners to their winter fuel allowance this year. And that's on top of the the £600 we're giving to 8 million households of the the poorest households in this country in terms of um, uh, extra support. But Martin's right. So that is the measures we put in place right now because we anticipated this energy price cap rise. He's also right that that's going to get worse. We think in January it will get higher. And so that's why the new prime minister, when they come in in September, will do an emergency budget to plan further ahead for those rises that we think will come in the new year. So we have put significant funding in place for families. It's not taken the problem away completely. Of course not. We recognise that. Um, But there will be further support coming um, to try and help people because we know that the energy price cap is going to be raised further in the coming months ahead. Martin says that rebate was decided before the price cap went up, though. Uh, So clearly... It's not enough. Well, the, I mean, the energy price cap in itself, again, we as a conservatives, we brought the energy price cap in. If you talk to businesses where there isn't an energy, energy price cap, some of their energy bills have gone up 60, 70 percent um, in the last six months. The energy price cap itself has, has kind of capped that increase uh, that households have had to pay for by about 700 pounds. But that cap can only last so long when uh, the global prices are going up. So uh, the, the um, independent regulator reviews that and, you know, has felt that, that cap cap is, is um, too tight at the moment and has put it up further. So the energy price cap in itself is a help um, and, and stops households from being completely exposed to the true price of energy costs. But, you know, we have put, most households are getting over a £1,000 of help for uh, this right now. Uh, it, it either uh, I've had some help already or in the next few weeks. And that's why we know that the uh, price cap is likely to rise again in January. And so there'll be further announcements to help to deal with that. We can't take the pain away completely completely but we can help as much as possible and uh, ensuring that you know the most vulnerable households are getting over 1600 pounds on average in terms of help we will do more because we do uh, expect um those rises to keep going certainly um over the winter and into early next year i mean the situation of us all having to wait for a new prime minister to be installed uh you know before we get some clarity on the issue is not ideal though is it Well, I think we have had clarity. When Rishi Sunak was the Chancellor, he set out very clearly by raising the national insurance threshold that people will be able to keep about £330 of the money they earn, the council tax rebate, the £400 for the energy bills, the extra winter fuel allowance. That all adds up to be um, significant help. 
but it doesn't cover the full cost of the rise. So, you know, there is active um, uh, support right now, um, but there'll be ongoing support because this won't be the last um, rise that we we predict um, for energy bills. And so, you know, that gives people some certainty right now. What we need um, go entering into January is the new plan, which will be announced, you know, literally uh, in a couple of weeks' time. But there is significant help uh, available for, for people right now um, uh, as the, the uh, energy price cap uh, rise was announced today. Conservative MP for Lewis, Maria Caulfield. Thanks very much for joining us this evening, Maria. 